Hello. So uh, thanks so much for watching my video. Um, if you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe. And if you're interested in me critiquing your Etsy shop, there's a link in the description that you can click on and it will take you to my Fiverr gig where you can go ahead and make the purchase. So if you're interested in that, take a look. And if not, it's all good. Enjoy the video. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hello. Um, so first, I just want to uh, say thank you for ordering my gig on uh, Fiverr. I'm going to go ahead and do a critique of your Etsy shop. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is your branding and your first impression. And so here I am on your Etsy shop, and I get a pretty good first impression here because of this cover photo that you have. You know, I click here and I can see that it looks like you're selling, you know, art, framed art. I'm not this. Uh, I'm not too familiar with this niche or pebble artwork. I haven't heard of that before, but I do get a good idea of what you're selling. Um, the only thing is that I thought was kind of weird is that this photo is kind of uh, like narrow. Usually they're a little bigger like that. Um, I'll show you some examples in a second here. Um, but I think this is a cute little logo. kind of shows what you're selling. Um, right here I can see handmade sea glass and pebble artwork. And then you have a nice photo of you and one of your children. So I think it's a good job there. The only thing maybe is to have a um, more of a wider cover photo. Um, you got some good reviews. Good sales. Um, let's check out your announcement. So first off, I would update this. You can see that it's a few years old. Um, you know, me personally, I like to try and update it on the first of the month. It just makes it look uh, fresh, relevant. And let's take a look at this. So this is all you have. Welcome to. Yeah, so I would probably try to improve this announcement right here. Um, let me show you my shop. So this is my shop right here. I sell T-shirts. I went with the branding with the photos um, you can see my announcement is current and then this is how I have my uh, announcement set up so the first thing that I have I say have a question send me a message I usually respond within minutes I've noticed that if I can get people messaging me I'm usually able to get the sale and then I have just kind of like little um, bullet points with emojis so a sale that I have I let them know about the, the shipping, the production time, how many customers I have. I'm a family man, you know, a call to action, and then a link to two other of my shops. So you can do something like this. This is actually a pretty popular style. You'll see a lot of other shops doing this as well, where it's just like bullet points and emojis. Um, so you can give that a try if you want. Okay, let's see here. So this is good that you have sections. I'm just not sure if it adds up. Um, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but if I'm just doing my math correctly, it maybe it looks like it might be less than 253. Um, if it is, I would recommend that every listing that you have be in a section because it just makes it a lot easier for people to shop. Like if you go to my store right here, you know, you see I have a ton of listings. And if someone's just looking for like a school shirt, they can just click right here. They don't have to go through everything. Um, so just make sure every listing that you have is in a section. I'm going to get into your photos and listings in a second here. Um, okay, so a good amount of reviews. I'll show you how to get good reviews at the, towards the end. Um, okay, but I, what I want to check out is your About Me. Okay, so handmade art inspired by the beach and made with love. Okay, so really good headline. I like that you have a um, blurb about you and it's separated with text. A lot of people just have like one big paragraph of, of text. It's kind of hard to read. So good thing there. Uh, what I would recommend though is that you add some photos. Um, just kind of like telling the story of your shop and how you make your artwork. I would recommend having photos of like, you know, how you make your artwork, where you make like your, your workspace, um, the materials you use. You know, I saw something about the beach. So maybe like the beach that you get your um, stones from, things like that. Here is mine. So I have something similar with like a, you know, just a short little story talking about myself. But then I have like photos of how my t shirts are made. So that's how they're packaged. Um, you know, the printing press. 
um, things like that. Just kind of like gives an idea. You can also do a video as well. Um, but if you can, I would try and add some photos. So you got your social media. Good job. And okay, so here you're missing an FAQ. Um, you want to add an FAQ. It doesn't have to be crazy, but at least three questions. So if you keep getting like a common question from some of your customers, you, know, you want to add that in. Here is mine. You know, like I said, it's nothing crazy, but I just have like, do you offer colors besides navy, black and navy? You know, there's one question, two, three, four, five. Um, you know, like I said, you don't have to go crazy, but I would at least recommend three. Etsy um, promotes shops better that have all the information on the shop filled out. All right. So if you can, I would recommend adding in an FAQ. Um, but overall, first impression, I think it's really, uh, really good. It's uh, very cute. Perfect for Etsy. Um, uh, one, oh yeah, one thing I want to show you. Um, one of the things that really made a difference for me when I uh, started to actually start making money on Etsy is I started, um, researching what other successful t-shirt shops were doing. I started, um, um, kind of like doing what they were doing. Um, and so I went on to E-Rank here and I just went to competition top sellers and I clicked on art. And I just started looking at the the top stores on Etsy that sell art just so you kind of get like an idea. So like here you can see this person has a really nice uh, banner photo. You know, if we just kind of like compare, you know, you can see how yours is kind of a lot narrower. I think this is really good. You know, it really explains what you sell. But if you can, I would try and make it larger. Um, same thing here. Big, nice banner photo. And these guys as well. So just something to kind of think about. You know, I would try and take a look at these guys, study these stores, see what they're doing, and uh, implement what they're doing, and it'll help you. I know it helped me when, once I started doing that. Um, okay, so I was taking some notes here. Get rid of this. Hide. Um, Okay, so branding, announcement about me. Okay, so let's get into your photos. Um, so uh, thumbnails, besides like the titles, thumb or photos and thumbnails are like the most important. You know, thumbnails will make or break you. Um, I always tell my students or people that I do these critiques for that your uh, thumbnails and your photos have to be above and beyond. You know, you have to like go the extra mile with your photos and thumbnails. And I think you have pretty good um, thumbnails here. Um, the main thing with thumbnails is that you should just be able to look at the thumbnail and know exactly what you're selling without having to read the title. It should, um, you know, have good lighting, uh, which yours does. It should not be cut off. Like sometimes, you know, half the product is cut off. So it makes it hard to see um, what it is. And then I also recommend white backgrounds, which you have. Etsy has uh, told us that listings with white backgrounds tend to sell the best. Um, one thing that I might recommend with your thumbnails um, is if you can, I don't know if you're able to or not, I don't know if there's space here left, but kind of enlarge them because it's just kind of hard to see a little bit of what the actual uh, artwork is. Not on all of them, but on some of them. It's like this one's kind of small. Um, you know, these ones, it's kind of hard to see what it is. I have to kind of zoom in a little bit. Um, so if you're able to, I would um, try to um, zoom out or enlarge your, your thumbnails. These are really nice. Here I can really see what it is. You know, this one's a little harder. Um, another thing that I was doing is I was just typing in like pebble art. And I was just looking like these top four are the ads, but these top four right here are the, the best selling ones. And one of the things I noticed is that they all have this kind of like a, a darker border on the frame. And in your store, a lot of them, not all of them, but some of them have the, the white back, the white border. So these are really nice. So one thing you could try is try to like emulate what these guys are doing and i don't know how your sales are i mean if you have listings that are doing great then you know don't change them 
But like if you have some listings that maybe aren't doing so well, maybe try and change like the thumbnail and use like a lifestyle one. Because usually I recommend like white backgrounds for people. But since you're the majority of your product is already white, like some of them kind of get lost. You know, and I think like a, when you have a dark frame like this, it gives it a really nice contrast or maybe use a dark background. It'll really like make it pop. So you can see here, these guys have like lifestyle backgrounds. Same here. Um, another thing I would also recommend maybe that I noticed because as I was clicking on these, like, um, you know, these are the best sellers. I don't know if you're offering this or not, but I would recommend if you're able to, you know, maybe you're, um, you don't have that much time or not, but if you're able to, I'd recommend offering personalization. I don't know if you're offering that on your store or not, but, um, you know, it seems like that people like that. So, uh, you know, maybe give that a try on some of like the ones that you do for like home. Cause when I typed in pebble art, those are, those were the top ones that came up where it's like a, a home and family. Another thing that just kind of came into mind, pebble art. I see all these keywords that come up. You know, I would make like a pebble art for each one if you haven't already. You know, maybe you have. But I just noticed like if I type in pebble art, you know, the top listings that come up are these home ones. It looks like, or family, fam home and family. And when I look at your store, you know, you have only two and one or just I know you have 21 here in family okay so never mind but when I go to family these are the family ones seems like when I go to the family ones they're more like birds I would maybe recommend if you can try and make more like this because like I said when I type in pebble art those seem to be the best selling ones like family orientated home orientated and also another thing you could do like i saw this keyword <clears throat> you know make them family of three family four family of five with dog like every keyword that there is i would try if possible to make a listing like that um let's go back to this but overall i think your your thumbnails are good um the only thing i'm that i would recommend if possible would be to enlarge it just so i could see better what the actual art is i just think on some of them it's kind of hard to see like this one it's kind of hard to see that those are two birds or if possible when you're making your art try to make it maybe make it a little bigger like this one's really small you know because um you know when we just look at like what the best sellers are you can see that they're like these guys Oops, what happened? Well, on the ones we were looking earlier, you can see that it was just like, um, you know, really easy to see. Pebble art, that's weird. Okay, let's go back to the notes here. Let's go back to your store. Here we go. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, good job on the on the on the thumbnails. Just try and enlarge it if possible. Okay, so now I want to talk about your SEO. Um, so let's go ahead and click on. Let's go back to all. Let's go to this one. What happened? There we go. Okay, so the idea with the SEO is that you want to have, um, you know, you want to have words in your title that people are looking for on Etsy and that Etsy is auto-suggesting, all right? So basically, you just want to kind of be like a detective and you just want to go into here and be like, you want to type in words and see what words come up that relate to your product. And you want to be like a detective. You want to put yourself in the customer's shoes and just ask yourself, okay, what would a customer type into Etsy if they were looking for my, for, you know, one of my products? So pebble art is obviously one. So you can see that. So what is this? This is a pebble art flowers. So let's see if that comes up. Pebble art flowers, bam. 
Okay, so I would use this as like the first keyword right there. Um, then you could do like pebble. Pebble wall art. So bam, there's another one. Or pebble um, art decor maybe. Nope. Pebble. Wall. What I did is I went ahead and I I took one of your listings. Where was it? I think it was the home one. Yeah, it was this one right here. And what I did is I came up with a new title and tags for you, which is right here. Where is it? So yeah, so these are like the type. This is a an example of a title that I would use for this listing um, because you, you just have pebble art, which is kind of vague. Well, not vague, but it is what it's about, but this is for like a home or for a new family. And so these are these, all these keywords right here are, are auto suggested by Etsy. <clears throat> um, so that means people are, are looking for them. So I would use these and they're more like um, direct or more specific to, to your product. It's not just pebble art, it's pebble art home, pebble art family, um, handmade pebble art, um, you know, you have more like specific keywords in there, like family and a home. Um, so I would use something like this. One thing that I have to say that's very important is I would not just go in and start um, like I wouldn't take this title that I gave you and just change this and uh, copy and paste it and change this listing. What I would do is I would go ahead and duplicate this listing and make a brand new listing because if you just go ahead and start changing your titles um, it's going to throw everything off and this listing is going to fall off a cliff because if you look right here you'll see that this title right here matches with the URL up here All right. and so if you just take this title that I gave you and change it you know the title and the URL are not going to match and it's going to confuse Etsy this listing has already um, has been ranked so I, I just went um, change your titles. I would make duplicate listings, and the way you do that is you just if I just clicked on a link here, one of mine, you just want to go up here and you want to hit copy. All right, you hit copy, and then you can just go ahead. It'll duplicate it, so you don't have to redo all the photos and all the um and the description. It just makes it easier. One thing I wanted to mention that I forgot when I was talking about the photos. Um, let's see here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then it goes back up. So you got seven photos. Okay, so that's good. I would recommend if you can using all uh, – Etsy gives us 10 um, slots, so I would recommend using all 10 if you can. Um, but these are really cute, really nice. Okay, it looks like you have the options. Okay, so that's really good. Um, if you can, I would try to make a video. You know, you can make a video of, you know, how you make your products. Um, here's an example of how I do my – videos um, where is it it's just a quick 15 minute or 15 second video hopefully it'll load quickly but it's just kind of like talking about my about my store how many sales I have how many reviews okay so here we go why well, yes So you can do something like that. It's very simple, very easy, easy to make. Um, it's just going to, uh, you know, the more information you can give your customer, the better because um, they can just watch the video. And if you need to, like, get more, if you need more photos, because here, like, I think you get at two or three more, you can do something like what I'm doing as well. So like I add in, add in these little info commercials because not everyone's going to read the description. So you, I tell them right here, the production time, the shipping info. Um, I talk about, you know, how many uh, reviews I have, how many sales, when I was established, how I gladly accept returns. Um, you know, want more information, read the description, send me a message, favorite my shop, ask about custom, custom orders. You know, I'm trying to get them to engage with me. 
Another thing you can do as well, because I have a, uh, a, a second Etsy shop. I just made this one um, just like a couple weeks ago. But in my photos, and since you're, I, I think I saw that you're a mom of three, you know, you can show that to them. So like here, like I have an example, you know, showing them that I'm a real person. I'm a family man. I'm a father. I'm a husband. You know, you're not just supporting like some, you know, corporation. You know, I'm a small business and I'm supporting a family. So I say thank you for supporting us and our little family. You can do something like this. It just shows the customer that you're a real, real person. All right. So that's just to give you some ideas on how to, um, you know, get more photos in your listings and things like that. But uh, overall, I think your photos are really good. I think maybe where you need the most work is on your SEO, you know, using words um, that people are typing in on Etsy that Etsy auto suggests. So you just want to be like a detective, like I said, and just put yourself in the customer's shoes and start doing some research um, and finding words that are relevant to your product. And when they are, then you want to use them. And again, I would try to do offer personalization. Okay, let's go to your description. New home you need. Okay, you offer customization here, see. Okay, so I think it's uh description is pretty good. It's a little you know, maybe could be a little more beefed up. Um you know, I would go into like try and find some. Let's see what some other people are doing. Let's go to Pebble Art. Let's see, spec. Well, 65 bucks, man. Like you see these guys right here, look at all the keywords that they're using. You know, they have a nice lifestyle photo, really nice photography. Um, so, you know, I would try and do something similar like this. This is an Etsy pick, so obviously it's doing well. You know, you want to study what's successful for other uh, Etsy sellers that are selling similar art as you and do what they're doing. You know, so I would try and maybe get like a nice photo like this, improve your SEO. Don't change your SEO or your, your current listings, make duplicates. These guys are offering personalization. I would do that as well. Let's look at their description. Okay, so you can see, well, it's kind of similar to yours. Um, okay, let's go back and look at your tags. Okay, so this is yours. Um, Let's look at your tags. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so Etsy gives us 13 tags. Um, you wanna make sure you're using all of them. And I, I would not recommend just doing tags with just one word. You know, you want it minimum two, recommended three. If you, I don't know where the article is, but if you go into the Etsy seller's handbook, they talk about tags and they, they say, Etsy tells us that you wanna use tags with like two or three words. So I came up with some tags for you. You know, I'll add these in as a bonus, the title and the tags. And I would recommend using uh, tags like this. You can see the majority or all of them are two words. Some of them are three um, and there's 13 of them. And I'm just, the way I'm finding them is just, I'm going into the search bar here and I'm seeing what Etsy auto suggests that's relevant to your product. All right. Um, so yeah, so I think you can improve on the tags as well. Let's see what these guys are doing. Where are they? Let's see how many tags they're doing. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it looks like they're using all their tags, and you can see all of their tags are two or three words. All right. Um, so you can use tags like this if you want. Okay, let's get back to the notes. Okay, SEO tags, free shipping. So let me just kind of clean up here a little bit. One, two. Um, okay, so one of the first things I noticed about your shop is that nothing is on free shipping and nothing is on sale. 
So if you're able to swing it, I would recommend doing free shipping. I would just pack the free shipping cost to you into your price. All right. So that way, you know, it makes it uh, affordable for you. Um, if you go to my shop right here, you will see. Well, I just uploaded all these T-shirts this morning. But if I go to like if I go to like the third page, you will see that everything in my shop is on free shipping and on sale. And the reason that I do this is because that helps you get found in search. So like, um, let's say I'm just looking for like Pebble Art Family. So you can see here, there's 4,000 results. So that's actually not too bad. But let's, let's find something a little more broad. Let's go Pebble Art. On something with more results. Okay, so 29,000. So that's, that's a pretty good amount. You know, if someone just typed that in, and I don't know if you're here on the first page or not. Maybe you are. Um, but the point I'm trying to make here is that people shop with these filters. So if you go into here, and if you click on free shipping and on sale, like when I shop on Etsy, I use these. You know, I'm trying to find like the good deal. Um, you know, I don't want to pay shipping. So there's a lot of savvy like Etsy customers. And if I click on these two, you're going to see this number 29 probably drop more than half. I would say it's going to go down to like maybe 10,000 or something like that. Well, it went, went all the way down to 1,000. So now you can see it's a lot easier to compete. So... Um, if you're able to do free shipping, I would definitely recommend it, but everyone can do a sale. You know, same thing, you just pack in the price. Um, and I would recommend doing that like mandatory, mandatory everything on sale because it's going to help you get found more in search. Um, and if you can, well, I, I would recommend that you do a 24 hour sale. Because, like, if you look right here, if you click on one of my listings, you will see that I'm doing a 24 hour sale. And the reason I do a 24 hour sale is because I get this little countdown timer right here that says sale ends in 13 hours. And this is really powerful because this creates urgency. People are gonna see this and they're gonna be like, oh man, if I don't get this t-shirt right now, I'm gonna miss out on the deal. And it's one of the things that's gonna, like if they're on the fence, it's gonna take them over the fence and make them take action and purchase it because it's called the fear of loss. You know, they're gonna fear that they're gonna miss out on the deal. And the way that you do, a 24 hour sale is you just go to marketing, sales and coupons, um, new special offer. You're going to go to run a sale. I like to do 20%. And let's see, today's the 15th, so you're just going to go from July 16th to July 16th. And you're going to do that for every day of the month. And you hit continue, add in all your sections. And when you do that, you're going to get this little countdown timer that I was showing you right here. And this is very powerful. All right, this is going to help you get found in search just because you, you're, um, you have a sale. And this is going to have make people take action because they're going to be afraid to miss out on the deal. When I started doing this, I saw a big, big increase in my sales. So I would highly recommend doing this. This is like one of the best tips I can give you, you know, doing daily sales and basically doing what other top sellers are doing. All right. Um, if you have any questions on that, just send me a message. I would be glad to help you out. Um, Etsy ads. So I don't know if you're doing Etsy ads or not. Maybe you are, um, but I would recommend it. Um, uh, I don't know what your budget is. Me personally, I do three ninety nine um, a day, so like four bucks. But if you can do more, you know, do five, ten, fifteen, twenty, whatever your budget is to keep you uh, profitable, and then just kind of see how it how it goes. Kind of like find where your sweet spot is. For me, I've been able to get profitable at three ninety nine. Um, Okay, let's keep going. Let's see as reviews. Um, okay, so you got all these sales, and your reviews are 200, 232. How long have you been in business for? 2018, okay. 
So let's get out of here. Let's go back to my shop. So if you see here, I have a lot of reviews. And a lot of my reviews are, are really nice, like long paragraphs. Like you can just go through them. They leave really nice photos like this. Love it. Um, sums me up perfectly. You know, pretty much all of them are like five-star reviews. And, you know, saying great communication, great customer service, great shirt, great communication with seller. Well, this one was a four-star review because they could have sized up. That's kind of common. Wonderful seller with perfect communication. I love this shirt. And then, like I was saying, if you just click on one of my listings, you'll see I get a lot of people leaving photos. So these are all photos. Let's see. Do you have any photos? Where'd you go? Um, okay, you do. Nice. Okay, so that's really good. Also, good job. Okay. Um, the reason I'm able to get a lot of reviews and, um, five-star reviews where they leave like long paragraphs talking about how great, you know, their experience was and to get them to leave photos is because I have a, I send every customer I get four messages. I'm gonna go ahead and share with you these messages. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why I've had a lot of success with, um, my, uh, Etsy store. I get a lot of repeat business and it's because of these um, review or these messages I send. So here are the four messages I send to every Etsy customer to get five star reviews. And I'm going to go ahead and add this um, in the gig as a bonus. Um, so this is the first message that I send. Um, this is when I get the sale. So you probably have the Etsy app on your phone. So when you hear the ka-ching sound, you know, you want to send them this message right here saying, hello, thank you so much for your purchase. I will send you a tracking link once I have it. If for any reason there's a problem when you receive your order, send me a message so I can fix it ASAP. Thanks again and take care, Mike. So this is a really good message just because you're touching base with them. You're letting them know right away that you received their order. And this is also a really good message to avoid getting negative reviews. Because if something happens, like if it gets lost in the mail or if it's damaged when they receive it, if they're unhappy in any way, instead of them going straight to Etsy and leaving a nasty, you know, one star review because they're angry, you know, there's a higher chance that they'll go to you first because you planted the seed. You told them if there's a problem, you know, go to you first. So this is a good way to just avoid negative reviews as well. All right. And then once you actually, um, once it's been shipped and you have the tracking link, you want to send them the second second message saying, hello, I want to let you know that your order has been shipped and it's on its way. I've copied and pasted the tracking be link below so you can track your order. Thank you so much. Have a great day, Mike. And then you copy and paste the tracking link. So people love this type of communication because you're letting them know what's up with their order and you're giving them a resource for them to actually track it. All right. And then the third message, so you want to go into your orders and you want to click on completed and then filtered by delivered and you will see which orders have been delivered. And then you want to send them this message right here saying, hello, I saw that your order arrived. I want to make sure you're happy with your purchase. If there's something wrong with your order, kindly let me know so I can fix it ASAP. If you absolutely love it and only if you have the time, it would really help me if you could leave a quick and honest review about my service and the quality of the product. We love to see people wearing our apparel and selfies are highly appreciated. Thanks so much and have a great day. So this is a message that I send to get them to leave nice long paragraphs talking about, you know, how great the product is and the, the experience and how to get them to leave photos. Um, and then the fourth message is, you know, I have it set up so that I get notified when I get a review. So when I get a review, I send them this message right here saying, hello, I just saw the awesome review you left. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I really appreciate it, Mike. So it's just, just a great way to button up the, the sale and on a good note, show some appreciation for them uh, leaving you a review. All right. So these are the four messages that I send every customer. I would highly recommend that you use them. It's helped me tremendously in my uh, business. And then just a couple side notes, make sure to use their first name in each message. Make sure to use your first name at the end of each message. So hello, John. Hello, Mary. And then here I use my name. Just makes it more personable. So I will go ahead and add this in the gig. Feel free to use it. You can 
copy and paste it. You can use it exactly like mine. Or if you want, you can make it your own. You know, I'm kind of more like serious to the point. But if you're more like, um, you know, you like to joke around, use emojis, you can make it your own. Feel free to do that. All right. What else do we got? Reviews. Um, oh, yeah, right here. Custom message. Yeah, this is it. Okay, so um, I want to share with you a custom message that I use. Um, you probably get a lot of people asking you if you can do custom orders. Um, I know I do. Um, and there's a uh, message that I, I send to every customer and like nine out of 10 times, it helps me get the sale. And I just want to share that with you. So let me just go into my orders. So let's go to orders. Okay, so let's say that this person sent me a message asking me if I could do a, you know, a t-shirt with the name on the back or whatever. Um, this is the way that I would respond to them. And you probably already know this, but all those messages that I just talked about for the reviews, you can have them as snippets so you don't have to type it out each time. You can just type it out once and then just click on it. It makes it really easy. But if, if this person sent me a message saying if I can do something custom, this is the way that I would respond. I would say, hello, John, Mary, I would be more than glad to customize this for you. Please go ahead and make the purchase. And then the notes of seller kindly type in the exact text you would like on, this, on the shirt. Thank you for considering my shop and I cannot wait to get started on this for you. So this is a really good message because you're telling them what to do. You're taking them by the hand and you're saying, yes, I'd be glad to do that for you. Make the purchase and I can't wait to get started on for you. Because sometimes people will send a message saying, yeah, I'd be glad to do that for you. Um, if you have any other questions, you know, let me know. This, you're um, assuming the clothes and you're telling them exactly what to do. And for me, this is... Um, worked really well like in nine out of ten times so if you want feel free to do the same give it a try see how it works for you i think you'll have success with it um okay back to the notes three seo tricks okay so there's there's a few other things you can do for seo that's going to help you get ranked higher um you know the first one is that you want to you want to respond to people's messages as quickly as possible. And the reason behind that is that if you make Etsy look good, Etsy is going to um, you know, put you higher up in the ranks. Because if Etsy has one seller that responds to messages in five minutes, and then they have another Etsy seller that responds to messages in five days, you know, they're gonna promote the person that responds in five minutes because you're making Etsy look good. All right, so if you can, you know, you know, have the Etsy seller app and respond as quickly as possible. Um, the second thing is that you want to make sure you don't have any overdue orders. You know, if Etsy sees that your, um, you know, every order is shipped out on time, Etsy's going to like that. They're going to promote you more. If they see you have a bunch of overdue orders and you're late on your orders, you know, that's going to make Etsy look bad and they're not going to promote you as much. And then the third thing is you want to make sure that you're getting reviews, which seems you are. So that's good. That's why every order I always ask for a review. All right. And if you follow those uh, messages that I do, people, in my experience, people have been more than glad to leave a review. So you just want to do those things. Uh, respond to messages. Uh, make sure you're on time with your orders and get reviews. And then just kind of the last thing before we... Um, uh, finish up here you know there's the three steps to getting sales so basically there's there's three steps to getting sales the first thing is that you have to be found people have to be able to see your listing when they search for it all right and the way that you get found is by using um you know keywords that people are looking for in the search that etsy auto suggests and also using the filters that's why i was telling you how important it is to have free shipping um you know be have sales going on and be and have personalization because people use those filters to search. So that's the first part, you know, you have to be found. And then once you're actually found, you have to get clicked on, you know, so how do you get clicked on? You get clicked on by having a really nice thumbnail that's easy to see, that pops, that has good lighting, where people know exactly what it is that you're selling. Um, and then once you get clicked on, you have to um, get the person to buy. You know, so how do you get them to buy? You get the person to buy by having really good photos, 
um, which you do, having a lot of information about your um, product, having good reviews with photos, which you do, and also having that 24-hour uh, sale, some type of urgency to get them to purchase. All right. You do all those three things, all the things that we we're talking about, I think you will um, improve or your sales will increase. Okay, let's recap real quick. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. So, um, what did you say here? How can I make this a great experience? Tell me how to improve my conversion rates. Well, I think the main thing is just, you know, doing those daily sales. That's the first thing. Um, because everything else is pretty good. Let's do a recap. Um, Okay, so overall, I think your store is really, really good, really cute. You're selling a cute product here. You know, if you can, I would maybe make this a bigger photo. But I think the where you need the most improvement is on your SEO. You know, like your words are kind of like a little vague, like Pebble Art is good. But I would try and get more like, um, I would more like niche down, like Pebble Art birds, things like that. I would try to search for words that people are looking for that Etsy auto suggests. Words right there. So, you know, I would try and use more words like that. You know, every keyword that Etsy is obviously suggesting, I would try to make a listing with it. So, right here, anniversary, couple friends. I would definitely do like personalization. And I would definitely do the daily sales. All right. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but, you know, because you have to do one for every day. But um, I do mine for five days, so it's set, and then the next five days, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, I think your store's good. You just need help kind of on the um, on the SEO, having better um, titles and better tags. And I think if you do that with the, uh, with the daily sales, I think you should see an increase in your sales. So I hope this uh, critique was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I will be glad to uh, assist you to the best of my ability. Um, if you think I did a good job, I would appreciate an honest review. And like I said, if there's anything else I can do for you, you know, please feel free to reach out. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you again for your order, and I will talk to you soon. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.